Hi folks, welcome to another chip break. So, so much going on. We just got back from an auction. Uh, I'll wanna show you what we got here in a minute. Um, but at the end of July on the 25th, 23rd, sorry, we are gonna be at the Tormach Open House and I wanted to share with you guys the schedule I really think looks great. Um, lots of good classes. I, I want ones that stood out to me. I mean, seriously, a lot of them are great, but you know, choosing cutting tools, awesome. Demoing their new rapid turn, which is their sort of lathe tack add on for mills. Lathe tooling. Lathe tooling is an awesome subject where talking to the right person for half an hour can really help you a lot. Um, ooh, smart cool. What's that? Hmm. Uh, Fusion 360 general overview. I'm going to be doing a lathe fusion class, and I'm also going to be talking about bootstrapping your business. But again, lots of good stuff, and I think Tormach is smart to pitch this more as a learning, a free open learning day um, than it is just, hey, here's our, you know, come see our awesome facility and, and meet everybody, which is also cool. Um, so we also just turned down an offer for a free CNC lathe. And I wanna thank uh, the fellow Kevin who offered it to us. It was a Taiwanese lathe, a good, good win, good way. Uh, larger, you know, vertical, or what do you call it? You know, tur turning center, turret, but controllers and need, didn't work. You know, so controller need to replace maybe the motors and it's so tough because you're like, oh my gosh, especially from a bootstrapping standpoint, this could be incredible, but we're not at that point in our business anymore, which is kind of a bummer because I'm at a, a, I'm a bootstrapper at heart. Um, I'll actually come back to that at the end of this chip break as our sort of thought for the day. But um, it was hard to turn it down, but it was definitely the right call because you were gonna spend six to 13 grand just on new hardware. That doesn't count anything for time and you don't even know it's gonna work. And if it does work, you don't know what condition and quality and tolerances and so forth. So kind of weird to say no thanks, but no thanks because it was so close. But that was the right call. Thanks to everybody on Facebook who chimed in on that. Um, let's go take a look at what we got from the uh, from the auction. So I am part going through this big toolbox organizing project, which we'll go take a look at here in a second at the other end of the shop. Um, so when I can find list of cabinets at a good price, I like it. So uh, we got these two for 375 each plus the 12% premium. So uh, I'm, a, I'm fine with that deal. Not a screaming deal, but a good deal. But here's the crazy thing. Um, like most auctions, they, you know, emptied out all the toolboxes and sold all of the, you know, mics and tools and everything s separately. They just didn't empty these. So we're going to go take a look. I suspect um, we could sell the stuff that was in them and get our basis to zero. In fairness, I didn't even realize that when I was bidding on them. There were so many things I just didn't jog my memory I think wait a minute those aren't empty so I'm not uh, I'm not a hero here um, and then we got these two list of cabinets these are kind of different they open out like a lazy Susan type thing so not I'm sure they can't hold as much weight but nice for well it's just nice for certain things and they have a nice tabletop to them so I'm happy those were only 175 uh, a piece so um, this is some of the stuff that was in the, the cabinets a bunch of shim stock um, that's not really the exciting stuff. Let's go take a look at that. Although first I wanted to show you, we built some of these activators for the local gun club. So these are cool. You run up to them and you, when you step on it, it's gonna trip just like that. These two spring sensors, which then pulls another target. So we built four of them, a bunch of uh, targets here. This is one reason why I'd really like a new plasma machine is you kind of end up fighting ours to make sure the travel and binding and qualities. I mean, they do, they are great, but it's a, it's a headache. It's a stressful process. Well, let's go take a look at the uh, find. So I'm, I'm coming down home stretch on reorganizing all of the toolboxes. You can see all the shallower bins. These things are great for how cheap they are. The general idea, well, you know, we'll go over this in a spe specific video on organizing our tooling, but you can see it was, you know, no holds bar, 10 years of accumulating came out and I'm being pretty ruthless about what we're not keeping because, uh, you know, if I haven't used it for seven years, some things are worth keeping around because you may need a, a eight inch mic or something, but so much stuff we just don't use. So this was all of the stuff in those toolboxes, um, not, not this little thing. And this surface plate I bought for $60, that was separate. But folks, look at this. Full sets of dowel pins, one, two, three, four. 
um, this was not, sorry, brown and sharp indicator. That one's not actually as nice, but the Starrett stuff here is pretty darn nice. Look at that, six to nine inch Starrett. Um, some loose uh, Lufkins, nothing wrong with that. Same thing, Lufkin, Lufkin. Starrett number 123. That looks like an Asian thing. Sign bar. Mold finish comparer kit. Never heard of that. Okay. Starrett. What is this one? 9 to 12 inch mic. I don't doesn't. Oh, it does have a standard in it. Damn. I guess. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. More pins. Some uh, another sixty dollars for a dual granite block, which I thought was pretty great. Says it's to accurate to one tenth. Wonder what that equivalates out to for tool room. A bunch of these V blocks. Not in the magnetic ones here. Not in the best condition, but not too bad. Um, adjustable parallels. More more V blocks. Um, my point is, I, I think this was a ended up being a no-brainer so I was really happy with that we're gonna end up having another sale of some sort because I might keep some of that but some of it's extra and I just don't need it and there's a lot of stuff left in here that's the same way um, my buddy Kevin was actually from mechanical advantage was just mentioning the red tag idea where you put a red tag on something in a date and if you haven't used it nine months later you know maybe it just goes away I'm guilty of that because you know I've kept a bag of cotter pins for seven years. It's probably a two, three dollar bag. I don't really use cotter pins. Maybe I keep one miscellaneous bag of them somewhere, but why do I need to store and move a whole fistful size of cotter pins? Uh, switching subjects, here's a photo. We uh, donated $1,000 to the local VEX high school robotics program. This was proceeds from the charity fundraiser at our open house. So thank you to everybody who participated. The money goes towards any high school in our county who goes to a level of VEX where they have to travel. So I think that's regionals or states or, or nationals. And we've had a couple of teams go and they have to obviously, you know, get hotels and travel. So I think that's a perfect way because boy, if they've earned it, they absolutely should be able to go. So I was really proud of that. We actually, the rest of the money is still waiting to be donated. I've reached out to the two different schools and they're kind of trying to find a way to earmark it for something. So. I'll wait here from them. Oh yeah, I want to show you. Noah's working on some 4140 strips right now. We had to face this material down the specific diameter, uh, and it will warp on you. So then you got to straighten it back out, and then they go on this fixture right here, and they make make a bunch of small parts all at once. Hopefully that we've run that job before, so it should work okay. The Arduino project. I was waiting to get this in. These are these tiny ball joints that I needed to have that work a little bit better. So I'm actually going to install those right now, and then I'm excited to get filming on the Arduino project. I've got two bigger projects that I'm really excited for. I think I need your help on, so we're going to start a video on those. One is the DIY lathe, the other is auto feeding a 440. Uh, I want to get your help and input and show you, show you where I'm, I'm at, and it'll be a good starter video for those two series. And um, the last thing I wanted to end with is something that I never anticipated, which is um, we, I'm trying to just take it a little easy. We've, we've grown a lot and that's great, but what's weird is I didn't really mean to grow, I don't want to say this quickly, but basically I'm realizing that as you grow your customer base from a job shop standpoint, um, that's a good thing. You get review business, awesome. You need that to make it work. Uh, what I'm realizing is I don't want to necessarily keep growing because I don't that's not my goal I like having a small shop and uh, it's hard to say no That's the ultimate the conclusion that if a good customer comes to you um, You can't just keep saying no so for you guys out there that are starting I know that's probably the last thing you're worried about or thinking about but keep that in mind because my, I, I just have no desire. I don't think I have the skill sets and maybe I have the building now, but it's not the, I don't have the interest and desire to become a huge big job shop. So trying to stay nimble, I'm proud of, and, and, and just, you know, the right size, but uh, I'm still wrapping my head around that one. So anyways, here is some footage from the auction. I thought you guys would enjoy it, especially for you guys that don't get to go and see it. It's kind of sad because it's a business that 
uh, was around for 20 years and uh, I think it just had bad management. I, I don't know exactly why it closed, but it closed pretty suddenly. And from what I heard, they did good work. So that part of it's sad, but hey, you know what? Um, that, that's the reality of it and that happens. Uh, there's, as much as there's a lot of industry dying and changing, uh, there's a lot that's coming and doing well. So uh, I don't really have an opinion on it. I just kinda, I, I know we're busy and I know a lot of other people that are doing well and are busy. So uh, don't, I, you know, in this case, I think they probably got into debt and had too much obligations and um, that'll take you down. So be careful of that folks. Uh, so here's that footage, otherwise take care. See you soon. Hi folks, so we're here at an auction. It was kind of sad because obviously this place is under uh, sheriff sale or receivership auction, so obviously something didn't go well, but pretty cool. And it's actually an eclectic mix. They clearly did mold work. So there's everything from big radial arms and heavy rigging equipment to really precise graphite vertical machine centers and tooling and so forth. So for you guys that don't get a chance to see this stuff, this isn't that uncommon here in, in sort of the Rust Belt, central uh, Ohio area. Um, there's probably two of these a month and my opinion is it's pretty easy to get carried away uh, bidding for some of this stuff. I've seen stuff go for over new price before um, but you know we'll see this one was rare in that it was only about 20 miles from me. Most of them are usually two or three hours so I figured I'd come and take a look. So let's take a walk around. Just all kinds of tooling. Um, just I mean just everything. just boxes of inserts and you know who knows what these will go for but sometimes these will go for six dollars sometimes i'll go for 50 bucks uh, those will undoubtedly be coveted row of uh list of cabinets injection molding machine which I don't really it's interesting um, kind of surprised to see just one that's odd to me I'm sure there's a reason or maybe that's more common than I realize some basic welding stuff probably to build back up molds a heck of a I've never seen one of these before seven and a half ton crane on casters with an electric bridge on it that's kind of crazy uh, nice 150 ton press a couple screw compressors, some forklifts, interesting little um, box frame uh, overhead, only four ton, but not bad. Be a pain in the butt to move it. Nice radial arm drill, a little uh, voice crane Swedish drill, it looks like. Yo, I, I have no idea. I think it would go for 70 bucks, 200 bucks. I'd be, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but. I would suspect not too much. Row of bridge ports. Some grinders. Some drill sharpeners and dressers and stuff. It's interesting, they had their, um, is it this room? Oh, there's another room. Here's their, uh, actually this is kind of cool, little bandsaw, but then you can take a look at all the mold steel. Um, I know nothing about this stuff, but you know, H13 and S7, 440 stainless. Some interesting variants of when I was looking at this, what I see like DH2F, never heard of that. NAK55, it's kind of cool to see this stuff. It's almost like a free factory tour. All kinds of stuff here. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Oh, here's, this is cool. I posted this on Instagram. Take a look at the size of this. Vice. I think it's a 10, I gotta think that's a 10 inch because that's about eight inches. Kurt, uh, I believe it's a Kurt. Let's see if we find the tag. Ooh, maybe it's not a Kurt. I think it's 320. I think it's, yeah, it's listed as a Kurt on there, but I don't see the mark. Um, so this, I believe, is a pretty darn good machine. I don't know enough about them. The Johnson, I believe, or Johnford, yeah. Um, and it's a bridge style. I, I assume it's pretty accurate. I know that the only other time I've seen one of these um, optical tool setters was at the Tom Lipton uh, tour of the Lawrence uh, Berkeley lab, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, probably a great machine if you know what you're getting into here. Some older machining centers. 
Uh, this one was kind of cool. It's, what's it called? Graphite Master Argo Sea Key. And you can tell, like, look at how it's all enclosed. So for machining the graphite molds. And take a look. How cool is this? I, I wish I knew more about this EDM stuff. But look at all these graphite. I think these are called Sinker EDM molds. I could be wrong. Um, it's just, to me, that's so cool how they machine that and make molds out of it. Whole thing for going for sale. Got a little bridge port. Uh, this is what caught my eye. This little uh, row of grinders with that exhaust thing. I had to laugh at the optical comparators next to all the grinders. Maybe that's not unusual. Some nice uh, setup and layout stuff, some sign bars, sign plates, magnetic sign plates, a couple of Herod grind dolls that look to be in pretty good shape. Actually, I've never seen the bigger size right there. I'm sure that should go for a pretty penny. Um, more stuff. You have to laugh like you poke in your head in here. I mean, they will, auctioneers will sell anything. Like, take for example, <laughs> the cabinet or actually the fire extinguisher is not for sale. That would be funny. But just, I mean, if it can be moved, it gets sold. If you go to an auction, I advise you to bring a stool. It's nice to sit down, bring water, bring food, because you're gonna be here all day and it's nice to get water and a snack, um, paper, pencil, and then I always bring a full set of tools. So pliers, tape, tie downs, um, to, to tools to undo machines, electric, actually I forgot my multimeter, but bring a multimeter because you just, you never know what you're going to bid or buy and there's a deal um, and then you want to be able to move on it. This one today, I didn't bring a trailer. If we buy anything big, we'll come back tomorrow. So um, yeah, I might bid on this uh, Rockwell hardness tester if it's cheap. I'd like to have one. Uh, I don't need one, but I'd like to have one. Uh, I had to send things out a few times to get them tested and if it goes for 50 bucks, I'd buy it. Well, so far I bought a uh, box of taps for 25 bucks. Good, good deal, but nothing crazy. You know, passed on probably eight things that are so far going crazy. Uh, which is kind of a bummer because it's actually not a huge turnout um but it, you know it only takes two to, to bid something up stupid somebody paid over 200 dollars per uh drill index set for like a hoyt drill box a small one you know which you can buy brand new for 90 bucks with high speed drills in it i um, thought this was kind of cool though take a look i think these are mostly i think this is hsk but god look at some of the uh it's all you know heat shrink tooling and then you know like look at this Thing. How cool is that for mold, mold type work? Tiny end mill. Um, some of them look like they're in kind of rough shape, though. You know, kind of alarming to me, at least as a layman, to see uh, to see that. Uh, but some cool tooling. You'd, you know, you'd love to have been here when they were making stuff. Actually, kind of cool. We had a guy uh, guy come up to us who used to work here, um, who said, you know, let me know if you need any help on the equipment or advice, which is really cool. And uh, some folks on Instagram were commenting too that they knew about the shop. So, small world, huh?